Hey, 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 what the heck? Sorry, guys. Yes, my name is Sisters Kosana, and this is Close Up Medication. But you should already know by now that you should be calling me Usem Numzani. Yes, guys, when last did we do this intro? I felt like doing it today. Okay, guys, in this lesson, we are here to learn about calculating the gradient. The previous lesson, we actually understood how we can actually draw a gradient by using contour lines. If you didn't watch that video, make sure that you go and watch it before you come through here. All right, guys, as you already know, we do not have any maps. But then this shows that anything is possible. And to start calculating the gradient, we first have to do what? Draw our map. Remember, I'm Sam Numzane. Currently, I do not have any maps. So let's start by drawing our topographic map. So our first calculation, our first gradient calculation will be using what we call the topographic map. You must remember the topographic map and the autophoto map are calculated in different ways. Yes, guys, but they're not calculated actually, but they're converted. That's the most important thing. So let's create a question, right? So they say uh, calculate the gradient between a reservoir, right? And a windmill. Maybe let's say this is A, this is B, and this is C, and this is D. Usually, they will tell you guys that in D2, usually they might and they might not tell you where the reservoir is located and where the windmill is located. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Usually they might tell you, sometimes they won't. So this is our, what we call a uh, reservoir. So this is our beautiful reservoir, guys. So our beautiful reservoir is found between A3, right? And this is our windmill, guys. Our windmill, we definitely, uh, this is the structure of a windmill. Yes, guys. And now looking at this map, we can definitely be able to calculate the gradient. How do we calculate it? We first start by writing our formation, which says gradient. Teacher, I know the formation. Gradient equals to vertical interval divided by horizontal equivalent. Teacher, this is the gradient formation. This is the gradient formula, I mean. Yes, guys. So the question may look like this. Calculate the average gradient between the reservoir to the windmill. Maybe they say the reservoir on A3, they might tell you where it's located. Sometimes not. They will just tell you the the, the, the contour lines of this reservoir. And looking at our map, we do not have any contour lines. How are we actually going to be able to calculate the gradient? There are no numbers here, but then you know Sam Numzani has to create a plan. Yes, guys, so let's first create the contour line of this uh, windmill, right? So it, it looks like this. So this is the contour line of this windmill, and then there's another contour line yeah, here, and then there's this contour line of this reservoir, Right. So yes, guys, this we have now created the contour lines and maybe let's start to add some intervals inside. Right. Let's add some intervals here. And maybe this is thousand and, and twenty. This is thousand and forty. This is thousand and sixty. Yes, guys, this is a contour interval. So now we have our vertical intervals. We now have the intervals in this particular map. So how do you find the vertical interval? You first start by saying, okay, what does the question says? Calculate the average between the reservoir and what? The windmill, right? And you start by doing what? Okay, which one has a, a, a biggest contour line interval? Obviously, the reservoir, which is... 1060 right the the reservoir contour line is much bigger so we say 1060 minus so it has to minus the contour line of this wind gap of this windmill i mean right which is 1020 then we know we divide right this is the formula horizontal equivalent how do you find your horizontal equivalent you do what you place your ruler guys you must make sure you have that stationary you place your ruler from this point until this point. You must remember, if you do not remember the points and the spatial object, guys, watch the video I did drop before this one, which explains the points and stuff like that. Yes, guys, now let's continue. When I put my ruler from here to here, what do I find? Let's say I find seven centimeters, seven centimeters. So what must happen? What must happen is the fact that these contour lines are in meters. 
And when I placed my ruler from this windmill to this reservoir, I used the ruler of centimeters, right? I found centimeters. And then I have to convert these centimeters into meters because of these contour lines are all meters. We are speaking about meters here. And remember, which map are we using? A topographic map. So if a to topographic map, how do you convert from centimeter into meters? We definitely do as multiply by 500. That is your topographic map. Then we say equals to, what do we find here? 1060 minus 1020, even a great one can answer that. That is 40 meters, right? Then divide by 7 centimeters, multiply by 500. What do we find there? Use that calculator. What do you find there? We find our definitely 3500 right meters so now we have converted this centimeter which we found using our ruler into meters right because of the answer has to be finally in meters okay guys i am not sure if i do have space but then i do doubt that i have space so you have to continue from where i left off you say equals to you take this 40 centimeters which is the vertical interval you divide it in fact you, you do not divide you say 40 is 2 40 is to this number which is the horizontal equivalent 3500 right we definitely know that 40 is to 3500 but then you do not end there you say divide by you use the vertical interval 40 is to 40 equals to now it's definitely time to find our final answer so what do we do we say 40 divide by 40 it is our one is to 35,000 3500 divide by 40 it is definitely 87.5. Yes, guys. 1 is to 87.5. What does this actually tell you? It tells you that this is the distance, right? You do not have to write that meter here. But then we know that there's a meter here. But then you do not have to write it because of the answer has to be in the ratio form, which says 1 is to 87.5. Okay, guys, what does this answer actually tell us? Because of I said when we are calculating the gradient, we want to understand either that area it is either steep or it is gently. So when it says 1 is to 87.5, once this number here, right, these digits, these last digits are above, are above 20 then you must definitely know that this area, it is gently. What does that mean? That means you can walk 87.5 kilometer centimeters, I mean. You can walk 87.5 meters, but the altitude will only increase by one. Right? Then that definitely means that area it is gentle. Because of you can walk this long distance, but then the altitude is only increasing just a bit that definitely tells you that this area it is gently yes guys that is your answer but then let's come to what we call an autophoto how do we actually calculate the gradient of an autophoto let me wipe here so that we could continue okay yes guys now we are calculating an autophoto map before we move there make sure that you have already click the like button click the subscribe button why because of where will you ever find simplified education nowhere else than close up education so like and subscribe yes guys so looking at this map how will they actually phrase a question because of there are no points here there are no trigger no there are no benchmark there's no trick station height there's nothing that you could actually use to be able to calculate the gradient Actually, you are wrong. There is everything you need to use to calculate the gradient. There are numbers here, and there is also numbers here. These big numbers, usually they are in a circle, right? These big numbers are usually found in a circle. So maybe the question says, where is this? This is our autophoto, remember? Autophoto. So the question says, calculate the gradient between 9, right, to 7. Tell us the gradient between 9 to 7. How do you actually find it? You say, teacher, I know the formation, which I know that this is my first free mark. Yes, then I continue. Vertical interval, what do I do? I look at these intervals. I look at the contour line. I look at 9 
and I move with this cortisol like, oh, then I find it. It's 120. Then I look at seven. I move with this cortisol line. You look at the map. You move with that cortisol line until you find an interval of that cortisol line. So which one is the biggest interval? It is the seven one, right? Seven, it is 160, while nine, it is 120. And we know that we take the biggest and minus with the smallest. So we say 160 minus 120. Definitely divide. Right after dividing, we place our ruler from nine to seven, and definitely right in the middle there. Definitely right in the middle there. And what do we find? Maybe let's say we are finding our very beautiful four centimeters. Right, we are finding four beautiful centimeters. Then, but then because of this is four centimeters, and these contour lines are using meters, these intervals are using meters, that definitely means we have to convert these centimeters into meters so that this calculation can make sense. You can calculate with different uh, units. We definitely know that. And how do we convert in an auto photo to move into meters? Very simple. Multiply by 100. Guys, if you do not know, watch the videos I dropped before this one because of it explains all the converting and everything like that. Yes, guys, then we continue. It says 160 minus 120, definitely 40. It seems like it's almost like that one, right? But then it moves here. It says 44 centimeter multiplied by 100. We know this is our definitely nicest 400 meters and meters are we yet done not at all because of the answer has to be in the ratio form so what do you do you you take this vertical interval right maybe i still have space actually let me not not risk you take this vertical interval you say is to this horizontal equivalent which is is to 400 40 is to 400 divide by you are not done you are saying 40 is to 40. You are taking this vertical interval to put below this equation, right? Then you continue. 40 divided by 40, it is 1. Is 2. 400 divided by 40, it is definitely 0, 0,25. In most cases, it's not 0 here. In most cases, it can be 1, it can be 2, it can be 3. Uh, but then, because of I did this calculation from my beautiful head i did these numbers for my beautiful head this is the answer i i find myself getting right so what does this answer actually tells us it definitely tells us that you will only walk 0, 0,25 meters 0, 0,25 meters but then the altitude will increase by one meter so that tells you that this area it is steep because of if i'm walking just 0, 0,2 meters and the altitude has already increased by one meter. What does that mean if I have walked for, for, for over 0, 0,25 uh, meters? Definitely means the altitude will keep on increasing. Yes, guys, this is definitely how you find your gradient. Very simple. So by now understanding how simple this is, you must make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, why? Because of I have to be motivated in order to keep on cooking. This is close up education and I've enjoyed having you in this lesson. Okay. Oh.